Okay. Assalamu alaikum everybody. How are you all? Um, I'm very happy to see good attendance today even. That's very motivating. Uh, okay. So you see, uh, all right, wait, let me get my spotlight. Okay, awesome. No, I want the spotlight thing, not the pen. All right, awesome. Okay. Good, good, good. More students are joining. That's wonderful. Wait a minute. All right. Okay, everybody. So you see, yesterday we talked about growth hormones, okay? And we talked about the gonadotropins and all. And in today's lesson, we are going to talk about prolactin releasing factors and then prolactin inhib inhibiting factors. And then we are going to talk about corticotropin releasing hormone and then thyrotropin releasing hormone, okay? All right. So, wait a minute. Wait, I have to admit somebody here. All right. Okay. So, you see here, uh, yesterday we discussed that hypothalamus is going to affect, right? And then it will release hormones that will trigger somatotrophs and gonadotrophs, right? Today we are going to talk about uh, lactotrophs, thyrotrophs, and corticotrophs, right? <clears throat> okay, so if you uh, start from the first one that hypothalamus will release CRH that is corticotropin releasing hormone so if you see it's it, it will uh, uh, produce an impact on the anterior pituitary gland all right and as a result corticotrophs will be activated okay and then adrenaline gland will be in uh, you know triggered and then the release will start similarly we have uh, TRH, which is thyrotropin releasing hormone. It will go to, uh, first of all, it will trigger the anterior pituitary gland. It will release TSH. They will go to thyrotrophs and then thyroid gland will be activated, right? Okay. Then we have uh, PRL, that is prolactin releasing hormone, okay? It will, uh, the prolactin will go to lactotrophs, right? And then memory glands will be activated or inhibited by its action, right? Okay, so this is one slide which I want you all to please memorize, okay? That what is the stuff A, anterior pituitary gland is producing? What is the stuff which uh, posterior pituitary gland is producing, right? Because uh, in my upcoming lecture, which, which will be next week, I will be talking about it, that what's the role of these hormones and what's the role of these hormones, okay? Uh, but today's lesson is more, again, focused towards the hypothalamus. We are not at pituitary gland yet, which is the master hormone producer. We are still talking about the hormones which trigger the pituitary gland, okay? So the first one we are going to talk about is prolactin releasing factor, which is PRF, right? So several peptides, including thyrotropin releasing hormone, which is TRF, TRH, that increase the synthesis and release of prolactin have been identified in the hypothalamus and placenta. However, their physiological role is still unclear. So the thing is dopamine antagonists and other drugs that reduce CNS dopaminergic activity cause an increase in prolactin secretion. So you see, this is the correlation which uh, I want you all to remember that the drugs that diminish dopamine uh, release and activity, they will increase the prolactin secretion. So these drugs include antipsychotics uh, that includes uh, chlorpromazine and haloperidol. Uh, then we have antidepressants that includes imipramine. Then we have anti-anxiety drugs that includes diazepam. So various hormones also stimulate prolactin secretion. These include testosterone, estrogen, TRH, and VIP. VIP is vasoactive intestinal peptide. So the drugs that pr promote prolactin secretions 
are used to treat lactation failure, um, especially in the mothers who have the newborn babies, but they are unable to lactate. So we can give those mothers this, uh, you know, these drugs. Okay. So then we have prolactin inhibiting factor, uh, PIF. So you see there we were increasing prolactin release. Here we are diminishing, right? Okay, so inhibition of prolactin secretions can be produced by a number of uh, dopamine agonists. Of course, you could easily re relate, right? That in previous slide, uh, in order to in enhance prolactin secretion, we were taking dopamine antagonists. So in order to diminish it, we would take dopamine agonist right okay so uh, inhibition of prolactin secretion can be produced by a number of dopamine agonists bomocryptin acts as an agonist of d2 receptors and an antagonist of d1 receptor but i tell you what these are more in number you know all right so then is uh cabergoline is a potent d2 agonist with greater d2 selectivity it is more effective in reducing hyperprolactinemia than bromocryptine and has a half-life that permits twice weekly dosing. So therapeutic uses of these agents include inhibition of prolactin secretion in amenorrhea, galactoria, and prolactin secreting tumors. The correction of female infertility secondary to hyperprolactinemia and treatment of Parkinson disease. So you see, these are the agents where we want to inhibit the prolactin uh, secretion, right? Uh, Amenorrhea, we all know that it is about, when, whenever this A word is there, it means not, okay? So it's amenorrhea, it means that uh, the menstrual cycle is not at all there. Then there is galactoria. So this is the activation of memory glands without uh, giving birth to the babies, right? Uh, so these, uh, the ladies who have this condition, they have active memory glands and sometimes they are not having their cycles actively, uh, you know, there. Wait, I have a message. Let me check. How it can treat Parkinson's disease. Okay, you see, for, if you get into Parkinson disease, Right, I can literally talk a lot about Parkinson's disease because that was my project when I was doing my MPhil. But I tell you what, uh, dopamine activity is actually related to Parkinson's disease, okay? Uh, dig deep into what's Parkinson's disease and then relate to its function and then, uh, you know, uh, you can, uh, you, you may know that in Parkinson's disease, dopamine actually gets lower, okay, in quantity. Uh, and here, these drugs will actually enhance, uh, I'm sorry, dopamine secretion. So that's how they will help, right? Okay. Uh, okay, right. Then we have the other class that was corticotropin releasing hormone, right? Okay, wait. So CRH is a 41 amino acid peptide found in hypothalamus and the gut, a recombinant peptide, corticocorrelin, is available for diagnostic use. CRH stimulates ACTH, which is adrenocorticotropic hormone, synthesis and release in pituitary corticotrophs by binding to a specific membrane receptor. Uh, when I was studying, okay, um, I used to make a lot of draw, drawings and flowcharts, right? So I would want you also to, you know, make, uh, for example, if I were you, um, so I would be making this uh, flowchart on a paper, and then I would be, uh, you know, jotting down my notes in a few one or two lines or sentences that uh, what exactly each one is doing and how's the pathway going on. If you are an enthusiastic learner, you can always uh, produce a chart paper uh, where you know you have the entire stuff jotted down and summarize in a beautiful way. It's up to you how creative you are. Okay, so coming up back here, so CRH stimulates this 
and since this is in release, uh, this because of its uh, binding, we have already talked about. So CRH is subject to rapid proteolysis. It must be given uh, IV, okay, because it, it it is subjected to rapid uh, degradation, okay. So this corticocorylin is used diagnostically to discriminate between pituitary or ectopic sources of ACTH production and to differentiate between hypothalamic, hypophysi uh, hypophysial, or primarily, uh, primary adrenal disease. So you see, uh, I'm going to talk about this point more uh, in my upcoming slides when we will be discussing about the corticotropic hormones and everything, okay? All right, then we have thyrotropin releasing hormone. So you see, uh, if you go back here, you will see that this TRH will again activate the anterior pituitary gland. It will go activate, uh, release TSH, uh, that will activate the thyroid gland, right? Okay. Okay. All right. So TRH is a tripeptide found in hypothalamus and other locations in the brain. <clears throat> TRH binds to specific membrane receptors and stimulates the secretion of TSH from pituitary and induces prolactin secretion. And this is no longer available in the uh, US. I tell you previously, uh, they were available in the USA in the injections form, right? Uh, but later on, uh, their usage was diminished. Why? Because you see, uh, so first of all, the results were not that significant, okay? And secondly, uh, you know, the results, uh, they, first of all, they were not significant at all. And secondly, uh, you see, you give TRH and all of a sudden there would be a spike of TSH, right? And TSH goes to thyroid gland. It uh, enhances your metabolism. So it's like, uh, risky as well to use, okay? So that's why for these reasons, it was discontinued. I want you all to memorize that what is a discontinued drug. I want you all to search that what are those drugs which are in the orange book, right? All right, everybody, that is all for today.